Hi, this is Jacob L. Thank you for watching Sci-Fi Episode 5, Unlimited Gasoline. In this video, we will look at a relatively simple way to produce biofuels that can serve as drop-in replacements for the petrofuels we use now. The system is based on an algae pond. This should be as big as possible and grow a type of algae with high oil content. The pond is sealed and any air or water going in is filtered to keep the strain of algae pure and healthy. It's strongly aerated to provide plenty of oxygen and CO2 for the algae and keep the algae in suspension. The algae pond can get its main water supply from rain or desalinated seawater. The algae pond water flows through a pipe to a filtering conveyor. Algae is caught on the conveyor while water drips through. The water that drips through is pumped back to the pond and the algae is dried in a solar oven as it rides along the conveyor. The moist air coming off the algae as it dries can be blown through a condenser and the water can be pumped back into the pond. After it's passed through the drying oven, the algae follows another conveyor to an oil expeller press. This divides the algae into triglyceride vegetable oil and solid leftovers. The oil is pumped to a storage tank and the solid part will be used for something else. It can be used for animal feed, compost, wood or pellet stove fuel, or it can be processed into alcohol or methane by microorganisms. The oil is the main part of this system. At this point, there are many possible uses for the oil. Since this video is called Unlimited Gasoline, I will just stay on that topic. From the oil tank, the oil is pumped into a pyrolysis chamber. This is a canister that's heated to high temperature. The pyrolysis chamber can be heated by sunlight or a burner. The exhaust from the burner can be pumped through a soot filter and then into the algae pond to feed extra CO2 to the algae and clean that exhaust gases before releasing them. The oil drips in to the pyrolysis chamber and is converted into syngas. The syngas is mainly hydrogen and carbon monoxide, but will also have some hydrocarbons in it. The temperature, pressure, and balance of exactly what you're feeding into the pyrolysis chamber will control the output gas and vapor. For example, some oxygen is needed if you want carbon monoxide in the output gas, but with the correct temperature and pressure, with no oxygen, it might produce more gasoline-like molecules even without the catalyst. When the gas slash vapor leaves the pyrolysis chamber, it passes through a catalyst that will favor the formation of gasoline over other chemicals. There is a link to a PDF in the video description that's helpful if you want to learn more about the pyrolysis slash destructive distillation part of the system and what catalysts can be used. From the catalyst chamber, the vapor flows into a fractional distillation tower. Each type of fuel has a different boiling point, so different levels of the distillation tower can be maintained at a certain temperature to allow one fuel to condense and everything lighter stays vapor and continues up the tower. The parts that won't condense, like propane, hydrogen, etc., can be compressed and stored or sent to the gas burner for heating the pyrolysis chamber. The parts that do condense in the tower, like gasoline, diesel fuel, and kerosene, can be piped to storage tank. If the desired fuel output is methanol, the pyrolysis chamber should run hot with some oxygen to make the normal syngas slash wood gas. The syngas can be passed through a copper condenser with copper oxide on the surface to catalyze the formation of methanol, also called wood alcohol because you can do this with wood gas. The methanol is then cooled and stored. So there is a complete system to produce unlimited gasoline. This cycle is a great example of how to apply the four keys to economic success described in Sci-Fi Episode 4 last week. The system can be scaled to a very large size to collect as much energy as possible. It's mostly automated, run by pumps, valves, and conveyors. It passively produces without much human input and it displays the concept of farm don't forage by creating resources instead of hunting natural stocks.